Oh my God, my mic is off. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, back to what I was saying. Welcome to Cryptographics. Short and sweet of what I just said is today we're doing an episode based on Hex, and we're going to be diving into exactly what Hex is, how you can understand it in a very surface level as well as very deep, so you know why you might want to take action on participating in Hex today. And before we go any further though, I wanna show you guys why this stream is happening. Because if we look at this chart right here, which I'm gonna bring up on stream, and let's go to, uh, why is this Present screen? Chrome tab, let's go here. Cool, so look at this. We've been to 56 cents approximately here. Over the last, over a, over a year now, we've come all the way down to here, which if we look at this real quick, Guys, let me just make sure I'm, yeah, we're good. Let's measure this real quick. So that means we've come down 93%. That means if you, let's let's just say, for example, that you do decide that you want to take action, you want to get some hex today, and hex goes up to its all-time high of 56 cents. You're getting roughly 16x. Not bad, not bad at all. Who knows though? Thing is, we don't know if Hex is gonna go down further or if Hex is gonna go up from here. So we're not here to speculate on price today. What we are gonna do is we are gonna dive into a presentation that I have for you on exactly how Hex works in complete detail. So before we do that though, I wanna welcome everyone to the stream because I see a lot of comments. Now I'm gonna skip past the can't hear you comments. So if that was yours, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna click on it, but I see all you in here. Uh, we got Roof Dog. We got AC Max, we got Gubby. What's up, my friend? We got Godfather J6, Hexicat. What's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a great day. So there's 31 people in here. Real quick, guys, if you haven't already, please smash that like button. Make sure that the algorithm gets hit so that way this gets seen by more people. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So I am going to share my screen here real quick. And let me go to the right tab. <clears throat> Sweet. So we're here. Let's go to present. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, guys. So this is the investor's guide to Hex. Now, this isn't financial advice. So this the word investor here is not really relevant, but just in case you decide to, it could be applicable to you. So we're going to go ahead and carry on to the first slide. So the question is, the big question is, what is Hex exactly? Well, Hex is a smart contract and a token that lives on the Ethereum blockchain network. Now, I'm not going to explain what a blockchain is, what the network is here. I'm just going to kind of go from here. So the special thing about Hex, though, is it has no middlemen, entities, or anyone that controls anything to do with the code, which is unlike a lot of what we've seen with like Celsius or a lot of these centralized uh, entities or even a lot of protocols that have like roadmaps, admin keys, all that stuff versus Hex is completely immutable meaning the code is permanently locked forever from anyone making changes to the functionality. It was designed in such a way that it protects you from yourself by letting you lock up your tokens. Now I'll explain a little bit more about what that exactly means and why it's relevant later. As a reward though, for completely for completing a lockup period or a stake, which I'll start to refer, that at, refer to that as, and not selling, you receive rewards in the form of more hex tokens. 
since the people who have made the most money in crypto are the ones who held through all of the massive price volatility, Hex allows users to stop themselves from panic selling when prices go low and amplify rewards for when the stake ends and price goes up. So I want to pause here real quick and say one thing. I'm going to be reading from these slides. We'll talk about it a little bit. When I, there's certain parts of this presentation that we're going to get to where there are summary parts. And I'm going to basically reiterate what we've gone over and try to summarize it. What I will do then is I'm going to go back and look at the comments. And if I see comments that are relevant to what we've just gone over, I'm going to answer them. If they're not relevant, I'm not going to engage with them, guys, just because I want to stick to this pathway here and not make this stream too, too long. If you have questions that are further ahead than what we're talking about here, and you want to go a little bit more deep, I do have a Q&A period at the end where I'm going to be answering all sorts of questions that we can go off the deep end. We can just reiterate what we've already talked about or do whatever we like. So save those questions for then or the summaries, guys. So let's keep going on to slide number two. So again, what is Hex? Well, you could buy Hex tokens from a decentralized exchange and either hold them in your wallet or stake them. Staking your tokens is locking them up with the Hex code for a period of time that you choose in order to earn more Hex tokens daily while staked. So basically, you choose how long you want to stake for and you basically get to choose your own rewards and then mint them. If you choose not to stake, you can just hold them, send them to another wallet or sell them at any point. There's nothing wrong with simply holding your Hex. However, you will not increase the amount of tokens you own without buying more off the market. If you stake your Hex, you can increase your total amount by waiting until your stake is done and receiving your rewards for doing so. But how do these staking rewards work exactly? Let's take a look at here. So I got a little flow chart that we're gonna go over, which is very simple. Simply choose how many days and how much of your hex you're willing to stake or wanting to stake for. You're gonna pay a small transaction fee to confirm the stake, uh, to confirm the stake start using ETH tokens. This is a small amount. Now, once you've done that, the system is going to lock you in. You're going to get paid every day until the stake ends. So basically what you're going to do from here is just wait for the stake to end. Once this ends, you're going to earn, you're going to get your principal back. Plus you're going to get the yield that you got because you stayed staked for that whole time and you stayed true to your word. And there is a small transaction fee and then you relieve your original, uh, receive your original hex plus yield. So Let's quickly just pause actually real quick. And I want to go to another uh, website here just to show you what happens and what this website uh, is. Now, I am going to switch my screen here real quick to another one, present screen, Chrome tab, because I want to make sure that everyone watching this understands how simple this really is to stake. So. This is go.hex.com slash stake. And I'm gonna put this in the chat here because if you're following along for the first time, you wanna get, get a feel for exactly how um, this all works real time. Here is the website in the comments. And I'm gonna go back here. So simply put guys, you're gonna to come to this website. Let's say you have a thousand hex. What you're going to do is you're going to type in a thousand hex. First thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure your MetaMask is connected. If it's not, it's a whole different issue, but make sure your MetaMask is unlocked. You put the password in and assuming you've got that far, we're going to continue from here. So you input the amount of hex you want to stake. You type in the stake length that you want to do. And then the system is going to show you how many T shares you're going to get. Um, basically what you're going to lock in over that period. And you simply just click, click stake. And you're going to need to have this amount. You'll pay a gas fee. It's going to lock you in. It's really that simple. Type in the amount of hex you want. Type in the days. Click stake. It'll lock you in. Now, we'll get into all the semantics and all the details of why, who, why, where, what, when of all of this and why you may not or may want to do certain things. We're not talking strategy today, uh, but I will break this down and how this all works. So let's continue with the presentation. Real quick, I see Sandy Beach in here. Hello, graphics and everyone. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Let's keep going. So I am going to end this and we're going to go back to the presentation here. Let's go to here. All right. So we're going to summarize now real quick. Okay. So hex is similar to a, and now I say similar, it's not, but it's similar to a certificate of deposit or a savings account on steroids. You can earn passive income while you sleep. If the price goes down while you're staked, you prevent yourself from selling before the next rise in price. Your increase in tokens is acting like a hedge against the decreasing value of your hex during a dip. And finally, when prices go back up, 
your yield will amplify whatever gains in price appreciation you would see. You mint your own rewards after serving a time that you decide without ever dealing with anyone other than the locked and immutable code. Currently, a one-year stake currently yields around 12% APY. An average length stake stake of 6.6 years yields about 25% APY. And a 10 to 15 year stake yields anywhere from between 33 to 38% APY. And these are going to fluctuate. There's a bunch of parameters that we're not really going to get into today, but this APY can fluctuate uh, over time as well. So stay tuned for more details on that eventually. Probably not going to cover it today, but just know that that can fluctuate. So now, like I said, they'll fluctuate uh, over time in the amount of basically as the circulation increases, the, the hex in circulation increases, the number of stakers in the pool increases or decreases, or if someone emergency ends a stake. So let's keep going to the next one here. Actually, let me go back one. Let me just make sure everyone's following along here in the chat. Thank, I don't see any questions. If anyone has any questions real quick, now's your chance um, just before we keep going forward with the hex summary here or the, the presentation on hex. And let me just actually switch this. Uh, I'm going to go back over here. Nope. There we go. All right. Sorry, guys. Cool. All right. Moving forward here. So let's talk about hex's inflation. Where does this, where does the, the hex tokens you get come from? Okay. Well, hex's token supply is coded to inflate yearly by 3.69% every single year. So the circulating supply is always growing. Now, this inflation is paid out to those who are staked. It doesn't just go randomly out. It's specifically to people who are staked. Now, when you stake your hex, your hex is converted into shares, okay? Now, we'll expand on that in a moment here. Upon hex's birth, each individual hex token was worth 1 trillion or 100 million shares, sorry. The amount of shares per hex token will continuously decrease over time. If you happen to stake 1 trillion shares, you would get the daily payout for one single T-share or trillion shares. And we're going to expand on that here. Now, the T-share. This is what the T-share is. It, the system measures its daily payout of inflation to each user by the T-share. If it takes 24,122 hex to create a T-share, that means each hex is worth 41 million and change shares. If you have a T-share worth of hex staked, you will get whatever the daily payout is every day of the stake. However, you can have any fraction more or less than one T-share and get paid based on the fraction of a T-share or multiples of T-shares that you have. Now, the T-share price will only ever increase over time, making it more difficult to obtain the daily payout as well. This is because the system was designed to not allow users to ever be able to restake their hex plus their yield from a stake and obtain more T-shares than they previously had, given it's the same length of time. Every time a stake ends, the amount of hex it takes to obtain a T-share increases, not always by a lot, but always. So the T-share is both a measurement device for the payouts within the system, as well as a difficulty measure for acquiring that payout since the number of hex required to obtain a T-share is always going up. Example, if you were to start a single T-share stake for 30 days today, by the end of the stake, you would have gained approximately 183 hex. Now this is based on hexcalc.net. It's just a rough estimation based on the payout that's currently going on. And then it's just seeing what that would look like over 30 days for having a T-share, but it's not necessarily accurate. Um, but for the sake of example here, we'll use it. Now, let's say the total hex returned is 24,310. The T-share rate at the end of that 30 days will now be at least 24,310 hex. And if the user restakes their hex immediately, they would only get one T-share. Again, if they staked it for 30 days. Because of this ratcheting up of the T-share from shorter stakes, it makes more sense to do longer stakes from a game theory perspective. Though, how long exactly is up to you? And I've made a staking video called the, Ultim the, hex the Ultimate Hex Staking Guide, which if you want a more in-depth analysis on what makes the most sense, that's the video for you, uh, which I will, it's not in the description, but I will put that in the description soon. So let's look at another example on how this works long-term. So check out this flow chart here. So example, you stake hex today with one T-share for 15 years. The share price of 24,122 hex is what we're currently at. In 15 years, the T-share price, for the sake of an argument, just 
for an example, has gone to 134,000 hex. And you're still getting paid whatever the daily payout is, even though you locked in your T-share for 24,122 hex at the time. So by staking one T-share now, you're locking in the daily payout if it fluctuates higher or lower for the entire length of the stake. You get you hold one T-share in the pool for the entirety of 15 years, 10 years, 7 years, 5 years, however long you're staked, no matter what the T-share price rises to in the future. So, and that's even when it costs six times the amount of hex it originally cost for new stakers, or maybe it's a hundred times more. If it costs a million hex to get a T-share, but you staked at 24,000 and you're still staked while the T-share rate's that high, you're still getting paid the daily payout. So at the end of the stake with all your yield from your awards though, even if it's a million hex per T-share, you would not be able to get more T-shares than you originally staked. So let's summarize here. Hex has two forms. There's staked hex, which is shares, and non-staked or liquid hex. Again, staked hex becomes shares as each staked hex is worth a certain share of the total pool of staked hex and the daily payout of inflation. Liquid hex is just the token that exists in your wallet that isn't staked, or it could even exist um, on an exchange, but let's just say exists in your wallet to keep things simple. Now, a T-share is always 1 trillion shares and never decreases or increases, which means that every time a stake ends, the number of shares a single hex is worth will go down. This is why we see the T-share price in terms of hex going up. When your stake ends, your shares are converted back into hex by the hex smart contract, and now you have your principal hex plus the inflation you earned over the life of the stake. The amount of hex returned from a matured stake can never restake for more T shares than it previously could, given it's for the same amount of days. So let me just quickly check in with chat here, guys, real quick. Make sure, okay, two questions I see here. Gubby, my man, uh, where does that yield come from when you stake? Well, we just went over, it's inflation. Uh, let me just answer your other question though. That means each T share, that each T shares uh, payout will increase over time. And what if you divide an entire T share up into two, three or four stakes? Is that considered uh, payoutable? Um, I'm not, uh, let me see here. Payoutable is an interesting word for me here. Uh, if you divide an entire T-share up into two, three or four stakes, you're basically cumulatively going to get um, the same amount of T-share as you would have uh, if you're staking all them together or not. So you could, it, assuming they're all the same amount of time, if you're, if you're spreading out the, this amount of hex um, into different years, you're basically reducing the power of how many shares you can get in a single stake because you're dividing that up and you're actually reducing the bonus shares that we're going to get to soon. Um, or I think we actually already got to it. The bonus shares that you get for each stake based on how long that you stake for. So amazing. Hey, uh, Richard Hart Max, dude, I, my pleasure, man. We need, I, I felt we needed to do this. I wanted to do a, a stream dedicated to this so we have a nice platform people to come and learn on and make it make sense from day one. Uh, so thank you for being here, my man. And Soundmind TV, thanks for being here, my friend. And this is the first time the T-share finally makes sense. Amazing. Okay, yes. Th I'm so happy you said that. This is what I've been trying to get across for a little while now is the T-share. Once you understand the T-share, everything starts to make sense within Hex. And we can go way deeper eventually, but this is the basis for what you need for understanding everything else in the system. Icosa, Hedron, Maximus, all these different things that are being built on Hex. Once you understand the T-share, Hex gets easier. Everything else gets easier. So before I go off on a tangent, Let's keep going here. We've got a whole lot more to talk about. So we've summarized hex and we're going to keep going. So let's look at the effective hex. And I'm going to show you here real quick. We're going to go again to go.hex.com. I'm going to switch my um, switch my tab here to the right one. And we're going to go to stake. Now, what effective hex is, why I'm talking about this right now is if you put a thousand, let's say 10,000 hex in and you stake for 365 days, well, you'll see what happens here is there's this whole section where it says stake bonus, longer pays better, bigger pays better, total effective hex, right? So this is what we're talking about here. What does this part of the equation actually mean? Okay. So let's go back to the original tab and let's get into it. Awesome. Okay. So we're back. So now that we know what we're talking about here, let's get into it. When you stake your hex and convert your liquid hex to shares, 
the system gives you a bonus or the system gives you bonus shares that increase your position in the staking pool by up to 210%. It's pretty good. If you stake any amount of uh, hex for 3,650 days to, which is 10 years to uh, 5,555 days, 15.2 years, the system will increase your shares by 200% for the life of that stake. The system will give a declining bonus from 3,649 days backwards in shares all the way to less than 0.005% for a single day stake. If you stake 150 million hex or more, you will get an additional 10% in bonus shares in the staking pool. And like the previous bonus, it scales down from that number all the way to basically zero. And it actually does that pretty quickly with the bigger pays better bonus. Now, this is an important piece of the equation here that I need you to remember. You do not get to keep these shares as they only contribute to your number of T shares or shares while staked. Doesn't mean you're going to get that amount of hex. Doesn't mean you're going to get more or less. It's just a contributing to, amount of, to your position in the staking pool. And that's all. So let's look at the longer pays, pays better bonus versus the bigger pays better bonus. So with the longer pays better bonus, 3,650 3, days plus, you're going to get a 200% bonus share, uh, bonus shares to contribute to your position in the pool all the way down to one day, which is less than actually uh, 0.005% in bonus shares. Now the bigger pays better bonus scales from 10% all the way to 0.6% starting at 150 million plus hex down to 10 million hex. So basically below 10 million hex, if you're staking, you're not really going to get the bigger pays better bonus. And if you do, it's going to be so marginally small that it might as well not even be a contribution. So I hope that makes sense. This diagram should give you a good idea of what's going on here. And let's move on to the next slide. So let's look though at what happens if you hit this button, the deadly end stake button. If you end your stake early when it's red, you will either lose some of your rewards or some of your principal based on how far into the stake you ended it. If the stake is 180 days or less, you must serve 90 days before you can remove your principal without incurring a penalty. All other stakes must serve at least 50% of the stake before being able to remove principal without a penalty. If you end a stake that is longer than 179 days at any point after the 50% mark, you will get back your principal plus a portion of the yield you have earned based on how close to the end of the stake you are. The closer to the end of the stake, the smaller the penalty. The closer to the beginning of the stake, the more severe the penalty. So let's look at when you actually should end a stake. When a stake has actually matured fully, you will see the progress percentage be at 100% right here, where the little red circle is, as well as the end stake button will turn black. This is when you want to end your stake to receive all of your rewards. If for whatever reason, you do not end the stake within 14 days after the stake ends, you will begin to lose point. 143% per day or 1% per week, though this does take out hex per day and penalties um, of the hex in the stake as a penalty until the hex stake has been completely depleted. So if you just forget about a stake and you come back to it uh, in a year or so, it's going to be gone. It's going to be completely gone. So the good accounting function as seen above here, you can see just below where it says end stake is there so that in case a stake cannot be ended for some reason, the stake can be considered removed from the staking pool in order for the bleeding stake to not be accounted for by the system in regards to the daily payout. Now, anyone can engage this function on any stake, not just their own. And what that really means here, I want to really hit this home because I don't want to just gloss over it because it's kind of hard to understand. So let's say a hex stake ends and it's your hex stake and you can't end the stake or pay to end it for whatever reason. It is just sitting there and the system is looking at the pool as if your stake is still a part of it. It's not paying you anymore, but you are essentially taking up space and actually taking up T-share space in the pool and lowering everyone's payout, even if it's by a tiny bit. So the good accounting function allows for your stake, and anyone can engage this, it allows for your stake to basically be removed from the pool and still do its own thing and, and slowly bleed out or do whatever, but it removes it from what the system is using to calculate the daily payout. So it's a very good function and anyone can engage it. So let's look at some examples of what happens when you do some either early or late stakes or early end stakes. So this one here, 
220,000 hex just ended stake. Okay. The ROI is negative 73.8%. Of 2,514 days, only 249 days were served. This person got back 40,000 hex and the penalty was 202,000. So they basically nuked themselves. Now, this is what happens in an extreme case where 100,000 hex was completely nuked. The person served 12 days out of 15.2 years. And then the penalty was basically all the interest they'd earned. And they got back only 958 hex. So this is what happens when you end your stake really early. You want to be aware of what you're doing. Now, let's look at the late end stake penalty here. 135 million hex, a so big stake, ended late, 43 days late. So they still earned 9.4 million hex in inflation, but because it was 43 days late, they earned 2.4, they had a penalty, sorry, of 2.4 million hex over that time. So this is what happens if you're late. You still earn your interest, but you get depleted essentially 0.143% per day. Now the good accounting function, so what this doesn't show here is how many days along it's been since someone activated it, but what it shows is 675,000 uh, hex were placed into good accounting. And the penalty so far that incurred was 770,000 hex. Okay, so this has been sitting there for a while, but this is what happens when someone presses good accounting. So stop. If you don't know what you're doing, do not end a stake early. If the end stake button has turned black, it is okay to end your stake. If you end a stake early, 50% of all penalties will go to a centralized entity known as the origin address and 50% gets distributed to all stakers. So remember in the beginning when we were talking about um, the early end stake penalties and how the APY can spike. If a big player in the game or in the, in the pool um, it leaves the pool for whatever reason or ends their stake and they send a bunch of yield um, out, this is when we can see spikes in the staking APY in a day. And we've seen upwards of like 100%, 80%, higher than 100%. Um, things really can spike. But 50% of all penalties go to the origin address, which we're going to get into shortly. So before we do that, though, let's just summarize. When staking your hex into the share pool, you are credited with having more shares for staking longer and with more hex and are able to get more yield per day because of this. The max being, of course, 210% additional shares on top of what you put in. Do not press the emergency end stake button while it is red unless you 100% know what you're doing and the penalties you're going to get from ending a stake early. When your stake ends, the emergency end stake button uh, will say end stake and will be black instead of red. That is when it is safe to end your stake without penalty. Now it's finally time to talk about the hex origin address and we're not going to go into the deep end. We're just going to keep things fairly simple here. I want to give you the explanation of what it is, kind of what it's done and, you know, just some relevant, uh, just why it's relevant to hex and how it compares to other things uh, we have in the corporate world or the business world. Um, so the hex origin address is an undisclosed and unknown entity that we are told to have no expectations of. Now, this origin address has never sold any hex, which is verifiable on the blockchain. You can go check it for yourself if you really want to. It has only ever made moves within the system that have been benevolent to hex. There will be a link in the description for the audit of the OA if you wish to see for yourself. And I actually think I've forgotten to uh, link that, so I will make sure I have that in there. Uh, but let's quickly look at some stats here. Now, let's just zoom in real quick. Let's go... I'm going to have to zoom out. Sorry, guys. So let's look at the circulating hex. The total hex in circulation at the time this was taken was 632 million billion. Sorry, we've got a lot more hex now um, or a bunch more hex. But the OA has a certain amount of staked hex and there's user staked hex. So of the stake of the staked hex, there's 62 billion hex staked. Now, user staked hex, so actual users are make up 87 percent of that. And the OA has eight per, or thirteen percent staked, or eight billion hex staked. Of the liquid hex, so the non-staked hex, the OA has five hundred and forty-four billion hex. The user circulating hex is only twenty-five billion. So now, if we compare what the OA has down here to the entirety of the supply, the OA has eighty-seven point three four percent of the supply. The user ownership is 12.66% of the supply. But 
let's talk about one quick thing here. Now, in the beginning of all major co uh, corporate entities like Nike, Amazon, and Google, the founders own the majority of these respective entities. Over time, the ownership is distributed to new investors. You can think of this like inflation. As inflation carries on into the future, that inflation will go to people who are invested in the system. And slowly over time, the OA will not have that same percentage of hex that it has, and it will basically buy, be diluted. So we don't know what it's going to do. But as of right now, we've seen that it's very benevolent. It's acted in the best interest of the system. And like we've shown here, in the, it's very similar to in the beginning of all major companies and how it's acting in the high centralization of ownership uh, in the company. So that's going to do it for the presentation, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I see we've got the sexy time people in here. So we're going to block them real quick. Now, okay. I see hopefully someone got them, uh, put user in timeout. Cool. So I'm going to go back here a little bit and nice Gubby. I'm glad to get the t-shirts now, my friend. Um, Timothy Harris says extremely well done with this video. Thank you. This actually took a while to put together. Like, this has been weeks in the making of or organizing all this information and putting this all together, which I have another half, which has Hedron and Icosa that we're going to talk about uh, at some point as well. Not today, but it will happen. So expect that soon. Uh, soon we will only be talking in B shares. Now that's true. As the T share rate ratches up, it's going to be very, very difficult to get T shares, especially if the hex price is still going up. So B shares are one one thousandth of a trillion shares, of course. And that will be what most people are trying to stake for uh, eventually. Now, let me just keep going. Now, uh, Hexican Hockey says, and thank you for being here. Uh, maintaining your T-shares is already difficult. Maintaining your 10x Hedron multipliers, good luck. It's not going to happen. Um, those those are going to go away. Oh, I mean, we don't know how long the stakes are, um, but I'm not sure what you mean by the maintaining side, honestly. Like once they're there, they're there. People aren't going to have access to 10x bonuses ever again. So there's only a handful of people that were able to actually claim those and stake Hex for however long they did and claim the 10x multiplier. Uh, Than again, uh, uh, Than Ngayan, uh, I invest in Hex. When I stake Hex, I just lock up Hex. When I stake like a layer one, it validate transactions. I think staking has no value compared to staking a layer one. What's your thought? Um, it's, they're not comparable. Like staking uh, a layer one token, if you're talking about with like a validator or something like that, like with the new proof of stake, um, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum 2.0, well, you have to essentially lock up your, uh, your Ethereum essentially, I believe with the validator where this is all code. There's no middleman. There's no nothing. Um, there's, there's guaranteed inflation. Like this, this is, this asset is going up and the difficulty of getting this asset is constantly going up. So it's a productive asset that gets harder and harder to acquire over time. It's not like, um, it's not like Ethereum, uh, or ETH or ether in any way. In fact, you know, if ether doesn't get you any other tokens or any other game theory, or any other potentials, uh, maybe there's airdrops, but it doesn't get you the same um, the same possibilities as something like Hex does. I mean, Hex has Hedron, Icosa. I mean, there's Team, there's Maximus, there's there's now Poly Maximus. There's so many ways to participate in this system to get more Hex, um, or there's ways to basically benefit just because you did stake, like getting free Hedron, um, just because you get staked, which is basically the amount of B shares you have multiplied by the days you have staked, and you get the amount of Hedron that you can get over the life of that stake. So... I think I answered the question. I wish this was worded a little bit better, my friend. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, if it was worded just a tiny bit more clear, um, I could answer it a little bit better, but uh, thank you for that. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. Uh, thank you for being here, Frank. Appreciate you, my friend. And this is a good point, actually. So Brazology made a good point here, guys. So you can also end a stake immediately after creating it as long as the contract day hasn't ticked over, aka midnight UTC. So as of right now, it's... 537 my time and that means that there is an hour and 20 minutes before midnight utc so if i wanted to um if i wanted to end a stake i could make a stake now and if i change my mind i could end the stake before that and like brazology is saying it won't tick over and it won't keep you in the system it'll release your hex uh, i'm not exactly sure how much the gas fee is to cancel that um probably not too 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 much um but just be advised just be aware that's probably going to be an extra gas fee uh, to do that Jack, thanks for being here, my friend. Lumi, thank you for being here. Yeah, they always end up in here every once in a while. Thanks, Brazology. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you being here. Living on Crypto says fantastic content. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. 
Um, Pulse Chain Trader says, thanks for the stream. I'll use it with some new onboards. Much appreciated. Uh, Academiated, good to see you, my friend. Uh, it, evening all, good stuff, graphics. Hey, thank you. So real quick, I want to say, guys, um, you know, of course, this is the q and I'm not seeing too, too many questions come in, which is totally fine. Um, I wasn't sure how many people were going to get for this. I know Hex has been kind of talked about for a while, but I wanted to just create a, uh, a nice breakdown where you could come and understand it um, just from the ground up and you can go back. And actually, guys, what you can do if you want these slides, because you can come and listen to me talk about this, but if you want these slides for yourself, you can go to cryptographics.com and actually buy this presentation, which you can go over um, on your own and download it. It's a downloadable link. Um, there's a link in the description just below the top uh, description there. If you'd like to buy, again, this is free. You can watch this video over and over and over as many times as you want. But if you want the actual slides, because it did take me so long to do it, um, you can purchase those on cryptographics.com. No need to do it whatsoever. But if you want to do that, it supports me. It'd be great as well. So I see a couple of people coming in. Yondam Hawkage, what is up, my friend? Greetings from Philippines. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Glad to have you here. I hope you're learning lots. And let's check out Lucas Paluba. Do you stake Hex on ETH W chain? You can absolutely do that. Now, that's obviously up to you and what you think the long term, the longevity of ETH W is going to be. I don't have a commentary on that at the moment. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around the long term uh, possibilities with all that. But I think that ETH W has you know, some potential. And I don't know if you want to, well, okay. If the question is, do you just stake Hex on ETH W chain? Yes. But in order to do that, you can't go to hex.com slash stake or go to hex.com. Um, you have to go to a different website and I'm going to bring it up here. Uh, I'll show you guys. So now the Hedron and Icosa website, which is called app.icosa.pro. This is the, oh, whoops. This is the wrong one. Sorry guys. One sec here. No, nope, and I'm just clicking buttons everywhere. Okay. Chrome tab. Uh, we want to do this one. So this, and I'm going to put this in the chat for everyone that wants to use this. So on ETH W or ETH fair, if you want to go there as well, if you do happen to have or buy liquid Hex and you want to stake the go.hex.com front end currently doesn't interface with ETH work or ETH fair. So if you want to use the Hex that you have, that's not staked or you get some and you want to use it, go to app, the app.icosa.pro and you're going to basically have your wallet switched, excuse me, to ETHW. And when you have liquid hex, you can go into the hex tab here or the Hedron tab and you can actually create a stake in here. You can type in this, the, the amount, the stake length. You, you can either do a native hex stake or an HSI and you can do this all from here. You can end stakes. You can mint your Hedron all from this front end. You actually don't need to go to hex.com front end right now. So this is really cool. And I think Alex has done a great job. He did it very fast. And yeah, it's just awesome, guys. So this is where you want to go um, if you want to stake your hex W on ETH W. Let's see here. Uh, JDS Corp JD Scorpio, uh, do you have to create 5555 stakes for the minting of Hedron to be worth it? Um, no, um, minting of Hedron is a different topic. I mean, five, 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 it's relative, right? So you get the most amount of Hedron you can get by staking longer, right? But I mean, if you're staking a five, 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 five stake just to get Hedron, that might be the least efficient way to get the most, right? If, if, especially if you're like staking a small amount of hex to get Hedron, you might as like maybe, and your intent is to get Hedron, but also maybe have have the hex stake. It might actually be worth it if your intent is to get Hedron to just go buy Hedron off the market. Um, one hex T share will always for this for a given period of time doesn't matter. Will always basically allow you to mint the same amount of Hedron no matter what the T share rate is. So a max length stake of a single T share will always mint five million five hundred fifty five thousand. A one year stake will always mint. Uh, I think it's. 3,650,000 or 365,000 or something along those lines. Let me do some quick math here. 1,000 times 365 is equal to 365,000 uh, Hedron. So it scales up quite quickly. But even if the T-share cost is a million hex, it's still you still only get uh, 365,000 Hedron for staking that million hex for a year if that was a T-share rate. So I don't really know how to quantify worth it, but... Um, at this point, 
you know, Hedron is lower than its its value relative to if it was the same value of this as the hex stake. It's quite a bit undervalued. So it's a hard one to quantify when you say worth it. So if you can define what you mean by worth it a little bit better, I can answer that question for you a little bit more. Firefighting. Hey, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. I hope you're having a great day, man. I missed the live restarting now. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I hope you learned something. I know you're pretty in on hex as well, but I hope you learned something. Uh, let's see. Nice. Okay. Cool. Um, so guys, real quick, I'm just going to check to see how we're doing on the likes real quick here. I want to see. We currently have 71 likes. We have 50 watching. Nice. You know, if you haven't actually um, liked the video already, guys, please smash that like button. Subscribe. It would mean the world to me if you guys help me out with this. We're actually getting close to 10,000 subscribers. We're just over the 9,700 mark. And if we get to 10,000 subscribers, I have a giveaway that's been going on for a million Pulse X that when Pulse Chain launches, I'm going to be giving away. So if you want to enter that contest, there is a link in the description below and you can win a million Pulse X um, as a reminder here, guys. So please help me out and help all of us out because the more this gets out to everyone else, the more people learn about Hex and the more people get in, the more it all helps everyone's bags. So make sure you're sharing, subscribing, and you're liking the video. Even drop a comment as well, guys. Now, let me just check in with a couple comments I'm seeing. Uh, Lucas Paluba, did you hear about Zen Token? I have, and we'll be talking about that tomorrow, actually, with the founder, Jack Levin. So... If you want to hear more about Zen Token, tune in tomorrow uh, at, I guess it would be 4 p.m. PST, and come hang out, learn a bunch about the game theory and what, what makes Zen special, the principles, the three principles of Zen, and why it's actually a really cool token. And I think it's actually something that maybe, you know, if you have a couple extra bucks lying around, and I mean like between $10 and $20 in your wallet, might not be a bad idea to participate. But we're going to talk about why that might make sense more tomorrow. We're going to leave that alone today. So... Uh, King Gubby Design says, I got to run, be stoked, in, uh, be stoked in the video. Glad I caught it live. Hey, man, I'm glad you caught it live too. Glad to always see you, and uh, we'll be chatting soon. Uh, let's see, ETHW versus Pulse Chain. I noticed it only duplicated my liquid hex on ETHW. Uh, am I understanding that when Pulse Chain goes live, both liquid and staked hex on ETH uh, get duplicated? Um, no. So if you go to, I don't have my wallet up, but if you were to go to hex W, or sorry, ETHW, and you go to app.icosa.pro, the link that I, uh, posted here, um, then you can actually see your hex stake that got duplicated. It's a system stake copy. Everything stake, everything staked or liquid got copied. And you can only see the hex that's staked on the app.icosa.pro at the moment. So definitely make sure you're going to that site if you want to see your staked hex because you did get it. Uh, let me just finish reading this. Am I understanding that when Pulse Chain goes live, both liquid and staked hex on ETH get duplicated? Yes, everything in its state, whether it is liquid, whether it is staked, whether it's um, in a liquidity pool, it all gets copied over. Now, the liquidity pool thing is a whole other thing because stuff's going to get moved real quick due to the uh, the AMM fixer bot or the harvester bot. But um, yeah, everything is going to be copied over and duplicated in whatever state that it sits in. So yeah, guys, I think I'm not seeing any other comments coming in. So really, that's all I've got for you. So again, if you'd like to uh, purchase these slides and learn directly from those uh, the ones that are in today's video, again, you don't have to. This is this video is free and you can absolutely just watch the video many, many times over. But if you want to actually get the slides that I've created over the last couple of weeks, you can go to cryptographics.com and you can purchase them there. I think they're $14.99 Canadian. Not that much at all. Um, again, no pressure to do it. If you want them, they're yours. Go there and do that. Also, if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you can also go and purchase some merch. You can also join the YouTube memberships. There's a donation link uh, below as well. If you want to learn from me directly, you can go to cryptographics.com and, and book a one-on-one -on -one call there as well. And I'm seeing the models coming back in here, the, the sexy time people. Let me just put them, let me block them real quick. And um, yeah, guys. So that's how, if you want to support the channel, you can absolutely do that. Um, please make sure you drop a comment. Please share this out because the more people that see this, the better for everyone. And guys, if there's, Scammer, there is usually scammers in the comments. So if it doesn't have my highlighted cryptographics name bar, it's not me. I'm not trying to scam you. If you have questions for me that you don't want to get answered here because you're worried about those scammers, go to cryptographics.com and email me in the contact form and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't be shy with the questions. I'll be glad to help you out. So guys, let me <laughs> before we go, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that any further, but 
yeah. Anywho, though, guys, appreciate that, uh, Riskino. This is all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. There'll be there's a stream tomorrow with Jack Levin. I've got a con uh, video coming up about Icosa versus Hedron and what the projections look like over the next uh, number of years. And there's lots more coming to the channel, lots of interviews, lots of great content. So guys, have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow with Jack Levin. Peace.